I've always loved Sierra games. They just have a way of pulling me in with amazing stories and puzzles. Not to mention great music. Speaking of music, this particular music is coming from real OPL2 hardware. But not from a Sound Blaster or AdLib card. Now if you follow the channel you've probably got a pretty good idea that this is coming from our YM3812 module. We've made so much progress in the last video with multi-instrument support that now with just a couple of tweaks we can add percussion support too. And with drums in place we'll have enough of the general MIDI spec implemented to play video game music. So I think it's high time for some percussive maintenance. Just like we discussed in the last video, General MIDI defines a set of 128 different instrument names, broken up in groups of 8. These names bring just enough consistency to the intent of the sounds, while still leaving the actual sounds open for interpretation by the different artists and manufacturers. In addition to those 128 instruments, the General MIDI spec also accommodates 47 different drum sounds. Unlike melodic instruments though, these sounds are associated with the different keys of the keyboard. Well, 47 of them anyway. And each key plays a different percussive sound starting from MIDI note 35, that's a B0, and then going up from there through key 81, which is an A4. Now figuring out how and when to play these sounds is going to be a little bit different than it was before, but let's start where we left off with the last video. Just like before, we're going to conceptually assign instruments to each channel. As MIDI notes come in, we're going to find an open channel on the YM3812 and then update that channel with the settings from the patch that's associated with the MIDI channel. And then we're going to play the note. Now, here's where things get interesting. The general MIDI spec dedicates a special channel, which is MIDI channel 10, to percussion. If a note comes in from this MIDI channel, well, we can't just assign a patch to the YM3812, at least not based on the channel that it came in on. This is because the patch isn't actually associated with the MIDI channel. Instead, we have to look at the key that was pressed and then determine the channel based on that. So if I press C1, well, that ends up being bass drum 1. So I have to upload that patch into the YM3812. Similarly, if I play key D1, well, that's the snare drum. So I have to go grab the snare drum patch and then upload that into the YM3812. And the hi-hat works the same way. Whatever key you press determines the patch that you upload. One thing to note here, there's 47 different drum patches, and the first patch starts at MIDI note number 35. So we're gonna call that number 35 first drum note so that we can refer back to it later. So how do we wanna implement this? Well, I kinda of glossed over this part in the last video, so let's dig a little bit deeper into how instruments work first. Say a note comes in on MIDI channel nine. This calls the note on handler function and then passes in the channel and the MIDI note that was played. Now we've loaded all of our active instrument patches from ProgMem into RAM using that inst patch data array. This array has one entry for each of the 16 MIDI channels. Now the elements in our array go from 0 to 15 while their associated MIDI channels go from 1 to 16. So we do have to subtract 1 from the channel in order to figure out which index of the array to use. Incidentally, the reason why MIDI channels go from 1 to 16 is that channel 0 is considered omni, so events written to respond to channel 0 should respond to any channel that come in. Now, with our patch in hand, and using our MIDI note that was passed to us in the function, we can call the patch note on function from the YM3812 class and play the note. And if you look at the code from the last video, it looks kind of like this. It's pretty straightforward and just really is the same code that we've written above. Let's take a peek at how this works for percussion now. This time, the note on command is going to come from MIDI channel 10. Now, MIDI channel 10 is, of course, our percussion channel, so that means we're going to have to do something a little different, right? Just like before, we're going to pull a patch from a list of patches in RAM. But unlike before, where we only had 16 patches, you know, each one aligned to its own MIDI channel, now we're going to need an array of 47 patches, one for each of our drums. Now that's going to tie up a good 3.6 kilobytes of RAM, which isn't terrible because we have 16 kilobytes on this microcontroller. But if you're using an Arduino Nano that only has 2 kilobytes of RAM, well, this is where you might run into a problem. So how do we pick which patch to play? Well, like we discussed earlier, we need to use the MIDI note. And since the first drum sound aligns to MIDI note 35, we have to subtract 35 from that incoming MIDI note. 
I believe we labeled this number first drum note earlier, so let's roll with that. Now it's possible that our MIDI note will be either lower than 35 or higher than 81, in which case the MIDI note would fall outside of the boundaries of our array. But by modding this number by the number of drums, we can ensure that we get an index that falls inside of the boundaries of our array, and more importantly, that we get a drum sound for every single note on the keyboard, including the ones that are theoretically out of range. Okay, with our drum index in hand, we can now pick the patch from our drum patch data array, and then we can pass that to our patch note on function with the MIDI note, right? Well, almost. We use that MIDI note to figure out which patch to play. But if we use it here, then each patch is going to get progressively higher and higher as you go up the keyboard. That's not really what we want. What we need is a MIDI note that's tied to the patch itself. And if you recall from the last video, we actually added a field called note number for just this occasion. So we can take the patch data and then pull out note number and then pass it onto the patch note on function. And this totally works. But it seems a little bit inelegant. I think we can do better. Let's make a quick tweak to our YM3812 library. Right under where we define our patch note on and patch note off functions, we're going to add two new functions called patch note on and patch note off. These two functions are going to take a patch as the only argument, and then they're going to call patch note on or patch note off and pass the patch, along with the note number that's inside of the patch. Okay, hold up. Isn't it weird that we have two functions with the same name? Well, this is one of those with great freedom comes great responsibility moments in C++. You can define two functions with the same name, as long as they have different arguments. This is called overloading. And in this case, we have one function that just takes a patch, and the other one that takes a patch and a MIDI note. Now, whether you should use overloading is kind of a style thing, and when it comes to C++ style, I personally just do whatever makes sense to me. And in this case, these two functions seemed like special cases of the original function, so it made sense to me. Your mileage may vary. Okay, going back to our algorithm, we can replace all this noise with the more elegant patch note on function that just takes the patch itself. Now that we know how it works, let's check out the code. Which, uh, other than that tweak we just made to the class file, is really just going to be contained to our .ino program file. First, let's put everything together into our new handle note on function. We're going to take the MIDI channel and subtract one. We're going to check to see if the incoming MIDI channel is the same as the drum channel. And if it is, we're going to calculate the drum index, and then pull the right patch from our drum patch array, and then we're going to pass that to the patch note on function. But if it isn't, then we're going to send the patch corresponding to the MIDI channel, as well as the MIDI note, instead. And for the handle note off function, it's basically the same thing, but instead of calling patch note on, we're going to call patch note off. Now going a little further up in the .ino file, over where we define the instrument patch data and the load patch from progmem function, we need to add some extra stuff. Really it's kind of the same stuff, but just for drums instead. So we're going to define the drum channel, which is MIDI channel 10, and we need to define the first note on the keyboard, which is key 35, and then we need to create our array of patch data. We also need an array of pointers into the patches array. Basically, each element of this array is going to point to the index of a patch in patches. Remember, patches is that really big array that had all of the different patches in it in ProgMem. We're going to use this way more later when we start adding things like menus, so don't worry about it for now. Next up, we need to add a load patch from ProgMem function. This is going to be much the same as the instruments version. But when we're figuring out which index to use to pull the patch out of the patches array, we have to add on the constant num melodic so that the first patch we pull out is the first drum patch. Remember that now all the patch data in the instruments.h file is in that one patches array. The first 128 patches are instruments, and then the next 47 are drums. So we have to take the drum index that we want and then add on the number of melodic instruments so that we get to the right spot in the patches array. Okay. Last update, we need to load those 47 drum patches into RAM. And we're going to do that pretty much the same way we loaded instruments. We loop through each one and call the load drum patch from program function. We pass the slot in RAM that we want to load it into and the index of the patch that we want to load. 
And again, it probably seems a little convoluted that we have this drum patch index array here that we're just filling up sequentially. But down the line, this is actually going to allow us to assign different patches to different notes on the keyboard. So we're just laying some foundation here. Well, I think that's enough code for now. It's demo time. For this demo, I'm using Ableton on my computer to route all of the MIDI signals from my keyboard into MIDI channel 10 on the module. Now, if I did this right, then every note on the keyboard should play a different percussive sound. Okay, let's take the computer out and try using a BeatStep Pro. We can just hook it up directly. Don't forget to flip the tip and the ring on the MIDI jack, though. And now let's see how this module compares to emulated AdLib in Scum VM using another of my favorite Sierra games, Space Quest 3. Now I realize that it's not exactly an apples to apples comparison because the sound patches that we're using in the YM3812 module are different than the ones that were used in the original video game. But I think that's kind of part of the fun, right? I mean, we can actually reorchestrate our favorite music from our favorite video games. I think that's pretty cool. And if you do too, I hope we'll hit the like button and maybe even the subscribe button as well because we aren't even remotely done building this module out. As always, thanks for watching. My name is Tyler, and we'll see you next time on Things Made Simple.